Well, hello everybody. I, it feels like it's been a hot minute since, since I've last done anything cl clan gen related, hasn't it? Now I know what some of you guys might be thinking. Salty Sweet Ryan, this doesn't look like clan gen. Why is it in the title? Why did you mention clan gen just a few moments ago? Well, I, for those of you who don't know, uh, clan gen is one of the main things I do on the channel, or at least the thing that all of you guys seem to enjoy. But truthfully, I have so many interests beyond clan gen, I thought maybe... Since we've hit 5,000 subscribers, technically, like, a while ago, it's been a long time. I had some ideas for what I was going to do for 5,000 subscribers, but then a whole bunch of stuff started failing. Um, I lost my Wyvern Clan save, may they rest in peace. I lost, uh, I had to uninstall Sims 3 because it wasn't working, and I don't have enough room on my laptop to reinstall it, unfortunately. Don't worry, all my saves and the mods and stuff that I have are preserved. And they are all safe. Everything is fine there. But, uh, I thought, like, since I need to do something, I thought it might be fun to combine my, all the warrior stuff that I do, mostly clan gen, but even, like, my Sims 3 warrior stuff and some of that, along with, uh, some of my other interests. You might be noticing over here that this very much looks like a bunch of different like D&D races, like we've got humans, elves, half-elves, dwarves, like bugbears, gnomes, all the all the stuff that you guys all love from D&D, if you know what D&D is. That is short. If you don't, it is short for Dungeons and Dragons. It's a really great fantasy game that I absolutely love. I play it all the time. I play Wildermyth on my channel, which is very similar in vibes, not quite the same, but I love it. But I had this idea that I posted a little while ago. And I've also got, I asked you guys for like certain, like some of the cats that you guys love from my, from my various series. And I put them all into a wheel over here. I have a whole list of all your guys' favorite cats. Some of my, some of my favorite cats, some cats that maybe I don't remember what they looked like quite as well, but I'm going to be doing my best. I put them all into a list here that we can choose from or spin a wheel to the side. And I also have a second second wheel over here that has a whole bunch of different classes from Dungeons and Dragons. And if you guys all heard that buzzing just a little moment ago, that was because my dad actually was calling me up for dinner. So it's been about 13 minutes and I paused and I kind of lost track of what I was saying. But I also have D&D classes here. Don't know if I already mentioned that. But D&D classes from uh, Dungeons and Dragons, so we have like stuff like the Barbarian, who's like a heavy hitter. We have the Bard, who is able to like inspire their fellow party members through music and magic. We've got the Paladin, who's like a holy warrior. Rogue, who like focuses more with like, like stealth and will usually like try and like attack from the shadows. Got your magic classes such as a druid who's all focused on nature, the sorcerer who was born with magic in their veins, and the warlock who it makes a pact with some other entity to have magic. It, there's so much about Dungeons and Dragons that I love. There are so many different ways to play. I haven't played every class yet. I've got ideas for some of the classes that I would love to try, but I don't know when I'm ne next going to have a chance to try any of these. But I had this idea in mind. What if we took a bunch of the cats from my from my very, very many warrior series? I'm afraid I might not remember what all of them look like off the top of my head. So forgive me for that. But what if I took some of the some of the cats from my from my warrior series also and randomly assigned them a random class from Dungeons and Dragons and then used Hero Forge, this program here in order to make that cat become a character in Dungeons and Dragons with like whatever that class is. Like I have done like an example with Cliff Cry. I'll, I need to remind myself, be sure to like post the Cliff Cry mini on the screen. Uh, they'll probably be spinning. I made her into a uh, artificer, which is sort of like a magic, like a sort of magic mechanic type of class. Uh, I've never actually played an artificer myself, but they're like an inventor that uses magic type of thing. It's really, really cool. I have never played an artificer. Seems really cool, though. I'm gonna be trying to do my best to just try and fit them 
into each class, consider like how would they go about that? What kind of background would they have that would make them go into like whatever that class is? And we'll see what happens from there. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and spin for the first of our many warrior cats and see which one it's going to be. And... Is it Egret Slash? Looks like it's gonna be... Egret Slash! And of course, my dad decided to text again asking me some stuff. I... <laughs> <laughs> the timing with him every time anyways egret slash uh if you guys don't know who egret slash is they were the uh main character when i tried the life gen mod so egret slash is going to be our first cat so let's get back with egret slash then and what class would egret slash be in dungeons and dragons my first thought is Definitely going to be some sort of fighting class, perhaps. Okay, Paladin Ranger, it looks like. Okay. Ranger. Okay, that's actually kind of perfect for any warrior, to be fair. But yeah, the Ranger class. So, Egret Slash as a Ranger. Let's go ahead and start doing that, I suppose. First things first, I'm kind of a little fed up with, like... One of the things I told myself when I was doing the Cliff Cry test is I need to like, give them like all a sort of a main. Because there is, like technically the Tabaxi in Hero Forge will automatically come with a main. Right down here we have the main and long main. I, I kind of want to do like similar-ish hairstyles so they don't all have like the same look. And I do like that half ponytail thing I did. Like, that kind of works, I think. There's a lot of ways you can customize what your uh, what your character looks like in this. A little bit more of a belly. Curves I can ignore. Booty we'll just leave as is. Is there a fluffier tail? Wait, hold on. There's a new tail library. What is this? Update old tail. Wait a second, there is like so many tails. They ju they've they just completely changed how tails work, apparently. There's- oh, Fool's Gold. If you guys have seen, um... If you guys watch Dingo, Do Dingo Doodles at all, uh, they are an animator who talks a lot about their Dungeons & Dragons game. And... We got a large fluffy tail. Egret- uh, Egret Slash is very fluffy. Let's go with... That one's too short. Large wolf tail. Oh, that really does look like a wolf tail. Large fluffy tail. There's like so many ways to do it. A bushy tail. I could go with this one actually. Kind of like the way that that looks. Or maybe not. Short fur tail. Short furry tail. Horse tail. There's so many different ones. They really did change how tails work. Stinger tail. I'm gonna go with a large fluffy tail. It's gonna be easiest, and I can always, like, customize the shape of it as well. Let's see. Ranger. For those who don't know, a ranger is somebody who, like, goes out into the forest and is, like, kind of like a hunter, sort of. Like, they might, they might be able to connect with the animals. They're usually associated with, like, using, like, a bow and arrow. If you know Lord of the Rings, think of Strider, I think I think the character's name is. I've never actually... I watched one of the Lord of the Rings movies, but I haven't watched a ton. Um... Let's see, does that look good for Egret Slash? One's been kind of... That fits the general vibe for a ranger. Also have to keep in mind that Egret Slash had a bit of, like, main character syndrome. And I did, like, say, like, I think Egret Slash is gonna move on to becoming, like, the next leader of the clan. So... Old shoulder top, what is this? <laughs> Maybe not for Egret Slash, but I'm gonna keep that in mind. I don't remember seeing that before. I use this quite a bit sometimes. Uh, maybe not that. It's a little too mechanical. Let's see what let's see what some of the over options are. 
Oh, he's got like a sleeveless tabard. A royal capelet? I think that would go better with like shoulders or something, wouldn't it? Or something like that. Undercover overcoat. Interesting. There's some really interesting stuff. Hero Forge has changed a lot since I started using it. So it's really interesting to see like just how many different things there are. Rude chest piece. Maybe not quite like this. I do like having the straps. If I take that and I change the under shirt. Okay, this with the straps. Kind of works. Something that also would probably have like some bit of a belt look. Like this can work. I could totally see this look kind of working. Also this works as well. Or no, that looks a little... Hmm. It's something that looks a little bit better than that, probably. Actually, I like this. Then for gear, the immediate thing that I know I'm gonna do is a bow and arrow. Technically speaking, rangers can use swords as well, but... I'm thinking I wanna go... Demonic bow, that's fun. But I'm not going with that. Elven bow... Hunting bow... Short bow, long bow... There's a whole bunch of different kinds of bows. That's... What does this one look like? Oh, that's kind of fun. <laughs> Not quite what I'm going for here. Oh, this is fun. I love the way that this one looks. Definitely looks suitable for a main character, such as uh, Egret Slash here. And you know what? We'll do a swishing cape as well, because why not? Swishing shoulder cape. Just to get, add that extra sort of main character flair to ya. Because look at that. That looks so cool. And maybe I'll give you an animal companion as well. Because I know I can do that. What if we added... Might be good... A hawk. Ooh, that's fun. Actually, can I add the hawk like on your shoulder or something? No, it just it just sits like that, but it does say import a small creature into a hand. Not what I'm trying to do. But that was a fun idea. Let's go back to Oh look, this is a fun pose right here. A jump shot. Oh, that is fun. I do need to change up the tail a little bit though. The tail is kinda like has a whole bunch of different segments that you have to kind of like customize, different rotations at different points, figure out exactly what you want to do with it. You have to like twist it from over here. For this to kind of make sense, it's gonna have to kind of like look like it's kind of like twisted kind of upwards, if that makes sense. Because it's gotta be being, like, used for balance, you know? Cats use their tails for balance. And I want to stick with that, so... And I think that kind of works. The way the tail is set up there, I think kind of works. Gets it, like, a little bit more out of the way. I could also... Like, if I was just doing it at, like, a certain angle, get it out of the way even more, but I'm... Probably gonna do like a little round look at it. So for this, this works. Definitely not perfect. I'm sure somebody else will be able to make it look better, but for now that looks okay. So now I'm to work on doing some color. Immediately I want to go into dec to decals, and let's go to your face, Egret Slash. Because you have, like, half of your face is kind of speckled. There's all sorts of different, like, markings you can put onto your character's face. Kind of got, like, the ginger here on this part of your face. You can kind of go for... with that sort of shade right there. 
Keep in mind, I'm trying to do this from memory, so trying to remember what exactly everybody looks like off the top of my head is not exactly my forte. There is like a whole lot of different stuff you can do with this website though, it's kind of fun. Okay, this is technically called a vitiligo pattern, but you can use it to like do other stuff with it as well. With this, uh, I could take the. Um, okay, where's my paints? If I take my, if I take the paints that I already have, the library of paints that I'm using. That's. Or is it mix? It's mix. I'm gonna use the mandarin right here and put it on top of that marking right there, and we get same color. I'm gonna go back to decals and start doing this for like the rest of your hair. I'm gonna stick with that mandarin color, I think. Or actually, you know what? You're like we could make your hair like mostly that mandarin color and the rest could be white because you are a mostly white cat. Or, no, you're white and orange, but you still- you guys still get what I'm trying to get at, I think. And again, I'm not- it's- this is not going to be exact. This is not going to be perfect. This is just me trying to do what I can in Hero Forge. Hero Forge has its limitations, and I'm trying to work with them, and hoping for the best. Oh, hey, they have top surgery scars now. That's cool. You know, I'm gonna go with the calico up here, or maybe not. Pearl snake, splotches. Splotches might work better for this. There we go. And I can also like layer multiple markings on top of each other as well. And you know what? For the for the cape, I can also add some. Markings to kind of emulate the fact that you do have spots, or are supposed to have spots, even though if you don't currently. Double checking, there are dapples, there are rosettes as an option. I could go ahead and do some rosettes on you, actually. Might be a little tricky to make it look right, but I can do my best. I am going to have to like customize what these dapples look like, because they're kind of a little funky right now against the orange. Gonna have to customize that. But for now though... I can go ahead and start customizing what you look like a little bit more. Going to have to get in at some of the harder to find spots. Oh, there's toe beans. I just realized that I can see little toe beans under there. Since I can get at them, let's go ahead and get the toe beans different color. I think I've got most of like the base face covered. Oh nope, I still have some more to do around the face. And that's right, you had the sunlit ice eyes, so I kind of have to customize your eyes a bit. Let's start with the flame eyes, and I know I can kind of customize these a bit. If I go down here to where it says flame, the iris, if I can split it up, and take Oh, immediately, that looks so cool. You've got like the yellow and the blue. Let's see, let's go like more of like an icy blue as well, if we can. And we're gonna take this and move it more towards blue as well. And that just immediately changes the way it looks. Let's see, this should kind of... That actually looks so cool. You. 
You look way too cool, Egret Slash. You look way too cool. While we're here, I'm gonna change this orange as well to be a little more... Which orange is this? I'm gonna... Ah, it's this orange, okay. I'm gonna put it on here as well. I'm gonna just start, like, putting this on most of the dapples on Egret Slash. You can probably hear Axel munching away right now, that's fine. Let's see, what kind of wood should we go? We have a mossy wood here, which is kind of fun. Don't know what that means for, like, the integrity of the bow, but... I mean, that is a fun look. Got a mahogany polish right here as well. I kinda wanna go with a little bit less polished. Maybe I could do like a mulch brown up here and right there and then just like the mossy brown is kind of an accent and it looks cool. Going to put some leather right there as a grip. I do need to do your outfit for sure. Well, you know what? I know I was saying, like, we should do this because you have spots, but at the same time, I kind of want to do something blue because of all the butterflies you're chasing. I know it didn't say the butterflies were blue, but I always drew, I drew the butterflies as being blue in the thumbnail. I kind of like the way that looks. It actually looks like so cool. It's a little bit funky looking, but... Rule of cool, you know? Anyways, yeah, all that's left now is the clothes. I do like this this kind of aqua color. I kind of want to use this as like an accent for you because main character, nothing too like over the top, but just like something that stands out a bit. Actually, I should go with, like, some more greens, because you're a ranger, so let's go with, like, this for the shirt. Let's just go more leather, I think. Oh, hey, there's something called Ranger Hide right here. We can just go ahead and gonna mix it in with some other leathers for the accents. And I think... Oh, wait, there's a little hair tie. Let's go bean green with a hair tie, and I think that this would be Egret Slash. Definitely not perfect, but I did give it my best, and he turned out so good. All right, and. Geez, that took me a long time. I only have time for maybe two more, I think. So let's go ahead. Now we've done Egret Slash. Let's go ahead and see which cat are we going to be making this time. And... Pear Runner, perhaps? Yeah. Looks like we're making Pear Runner. And which class is Pear Runner going to be? A druid? Is Pear Runner going to be a druid? It looks like Pear Runner is going to be a druid. Okay. So Pear Runner automatically I think of as being like a much slimmer sort of cat, I, I suppose. I am going to stick with... It, it just looks better with the ears, if they have some sort of hair, I guess. Still awkward otherwise, but I don't know. This might be better, I think. This particular hair, I think, might be better for Pear Runner. Of course, we're gonna stick with the cat's tail. There's a few different options, but this one is probably my favorite.
I see you as being a bit slimmer, so we can go ahead... Maybe a bit smaller as well. We can keep the muscularity, but like... Making you like a slimmer cat. And have you like a little bit more like standing upright. You're proud, you are the current deputy of Thorn Clan, after all. You have every right to be like super proud and such. Now, druids are a magic class that focuses more on nature. So I have some ideas for what would work well with that. Something like this, but and then over it there's like some kind of naturey foresty. On one hand there's that there's that, but I also have seen some leafy ones as well. Thing is, I know there's a leafy one because I've used it on like another character in the past. There's seaweed chest wrap. Uh, maybe not. It's definitely too oceany for you. Uh, let's see. Fairy's chest armor says that moss, ferns, and bark are all kind of used in this one. This one does have, like, stuff in it. I don't know. Hmm. And I think about, I might have just used the druid chest piece over something simple. Now I think about it and just made it look like a leafy color. That could literally be it. Hunter, what do I imagine you... It's weird to, like, think, like, what do I imagine you wearing? Because, like, I don't think of them as, like, wearing anything. They are cats in my game. They- it's- it's weird to think of, like, well, what would this character wear? And here I am searching, like, oh, this- this doesn't look like something they would wear. Does this look like something they'd wear? I don't know. I feel like Pear Runner would be like a lot more practical. There's like a lot of things that like look cool but are impractical and Pear Runner just makes me think practical. So there's like stuff that's like rule of cool that like is like, oh, this is like so good, but at the same time it's just not practical. So I don't see Pear Runner wearing it because it's not practical and Pear Runner is a very practical cat is basically what it comes down to. I do. You know what, that actually... That actually looks good. And then you have like the wrap over the top. That... I do like that. Then as for... Like a sort of skirt or pants. We have leafy stuff at least. This one's easier. We have a leafy skirt is one of the first things that comes to mind. Doesn't quite work with what I've got in mind. With what you're already wearing. Scabbard. I don't know. The Disciple of Death draped over skirt. Looks cool, doesn't quite fit the current wear. Oh, I like this. Oh, I do like that. Gonna change the pants because that belt is getting in the way. This definitely kind of works a lot more, I think. Oh yeah, absolutely. And immediately, I think I would have you carrying a staff of some sort. There are all sorts of staffs here. There's... a lot. Crescent staff actually looks really cool. Might go with that. I do like the moon vibe it has. When I think about it, I could go with like some antlers or something, or ever like it's it's just kind of iconic for people to give their 
people are always giving their druids like some sort of like antlers or a diadem or something. Oh, like a little circlet like this. It says demonic, but I don't think of it as being very demonic. It just looks cool. Look at that. I just like the way it looks. And then in your other hand, we can also like have some magic of some sort. Just kind of there, ready to be summoned. There is, of course, like the extra large stuff, but... just do like a casual sort of casual sort of magic effect looks super cool and Axel is demanding some attention from me I need also summon some rock clusters that is kind of cool or do it like this, so we have like a magical effect surrounding them. That is fun. And then we can just pose you like this. That is a fun pose right there. I do like this pose. The tail does not have to be like pushed out of the way. The tail looks fine. So let's go ahead and get you colored. Now the thing with Pear Runner is that Pear Runner does have the sort of like gray coloring we're going to have to mess around I'm pretty sure pear runner has stripes but i don't know how i'm gonna pull that off with this look yeah you know i can actually pull it off on the tail at least the tail i can probably pull off some stripes can't quite see it very well right here but once i add some more coloring you'll be able to see the stripes a little better so go ahead and make yeah, that could be salt and pepper, and you'll probably start seeing stripes a little better soon. Go ahead and start adding some actual color to ya. Well, actually, this color does, like, lend itself to stripes pretty well. At least, like, looking at the hair. Like, look at that. What is a good color for your eyes? Maybe like, are your eyes like a bluish green or are they blue? I don't remember what color your eyes are. It's been a while. I feel like your eyes are blue. I am trying to do most of them from memory. So that makes this a little bit trickier than it would be otherwise. I do want to go with like some darker colors with you at least. Like some darker kind of bluish colors. Just feels like it would fit. This is starting to kind of look a little bit better. Outfit is actually kind of coming together. Now I just have to get the magic done. Got the rocks done, just gotta get some magic around it. I really love the way this one looks like it glows. And it kind of works. It also... Ooh, yeah, that actually looks a lot better with that. A little funky, but you know what? I love funky. And I think that that's you all taken care of. So, this is Pear Runner. You know, overall, I think that she turned out, like, absolutely gorgeous. She is stunning. She is really powerful. I could totally see her just, like, going to town on, like, some enemy who's coming in. Druids are very, very powerful. Don't know what druids are? Look up Keyleth from The Legend of Vox Machina. She is the... She is very powerful, even if she doesn't always realize it. It is... Druids are just awesome. They can also shapeshift. Y'all love druids. I want to play a druid so much someday. And finally, let's do our last cat for this series. 
for this little challenge at least. Let's go ahead and see who the last one shall be. I'm looking at the side and I just realized I put pedal spots on here twice. Well, we're not getting pedal spots regardless. Meow. We're getting Rhymeberry. Which is interesting because Rhymeberry is from a series that I was trying to like make a little bit more D&D-esque, D&D focused in a way. But let's go ahead. What would Rhymeberry be? An artificer? Okay, an artificer. Honestly, Rhymeberry being an artificer kind of makes sense because they are a magicless cat in our series. In the uh, Fallen Star series. Uh, I don't remember if they were long fur or short fur. It's been a while. I feel like they were a longer furred cat. I could go with... I could go with something like this, maybe. I could also go with like a longer mane. Make it look a little bit more like a mane. That could also work. Of course, if you have like a longer mane, that means I have to like give you a fluffier tail. Yes, yes, update old tail. I'm gonna hit foxtail, just see if like the bushiness of this is already adjusted for other stuff. There is also a bushy tail. Let's go with this, I think. Rhymeberry is one of the magicless cats in the Fallen Star series. So I can imagine that they would like... Like it makes sense that they would go out of their way to use the mechanical approach to trying to recreate magic, I think. That'd be very interesting. I wonder how I would be able to like pull that off too. I kind of want to go with... Uh, let's see, we've got some pretty interesting, like, outfits here. Something that kind of fits the whole, like, you are like a guardian of like this mystical object, but also... Yes. This one, immediately... Oh no, it doesn't quite look the same as it always did. Oh, well, that's sad. Why doesn't this look right? The spikes, I think, are throwing me off. It always had those spikes. I know I've used this for one of my characters, and yet it just... Why doesn't that look normal? Hmm. You know, I can use the whole, like, under and over thing to try and recreate it as best I can without looking awkward. No, that's not quite right. That, I actually kind of like. And then you kind of need like a sort of overcoat of some sort. A full blown trench coat is quite what I'm going for, but it does work. This is just giving me lackadaisy vibes. If you haven't seen Lackadaisy, go watch it. It is good. Oh no, that is actually super cool. A little bit, uh, maybe a little too sci-fi for me, but that, that does look cool. Now this just gives me Doctor Who vibes for some reason. I think I'm gonna stick with the trench coat. The trench coat looks cool. And underneath the trench coat, we have the cargo pants. So, for gear, I need some stuff that looks kind of mechanical. 
see, the last time I did this, I did a cro I did a crossbow with a uh, cliff cry. I want to do something a little bit more unique. So, if I hit sci-fi, what is some interesting stuff that will pop up? I see fish. Why is fish under sci-fi? Now this is some sci-fi stuff. Got some warhammers, nanotech cane. A mechanical bow is interesting. I'm gonna be looking for something that looks like it can, like... That looks like something that you could actually craft semi-auto... No. See, I'm looking for something that's like not necessarily like a muzzle flash. I'm looking for something that's like it could like be used to make magic or something. I don't know. A buzzsaw axe. Okay, spell effects are actually a thing here. A spiraling magic effect. We've got some. We've got an array of different kinds of magic effects. A large ice arch. Actually, if I held this in both hands. Um. The. Because because your name is Rhymeberry, I imagine ice kind of would work. Because ice is associated with rhyme, or rhyme is associated with ice, by the way around. Let's see, how would I pose you for this? Something like. That actually kind of works. I'm gonna come back to that pose because I want to be able to get at you a little bit easier. I learned my lesson from the others, and it is not easy to to paint a cat when they're fully posed. So let's go ahead and start working on you a little bit, Rhymeberry. Uh, you do have spots. I'm gonna hit the bangles option, I think, because it kind of works for what I'm doing. And your spots are kind of a darker gray than the rest of you. We can always change that to be some other color if we want. You know what, because of the vibe, I kind of want to do like a two-tone for you. Half your hair will be one color, the other half will be the other shade of gray. That could kind of be kind of fun. Okay, I think I managed to figure out how I'm gonna get those spots all the way down your legs and your paws. Okay, that works. The rest of your fur is kind of a lighter gray. Let's go with the hermit gray. It doesn't look much different from default, let's be real. It works. When I need to, I know where to. S I can spot it when I need to. Wait, I need to get the tail. I, I forgot about the tail, which is currently lying flat, but still. And let's see, you have some plain yellow eyes, so that works. I don't want to make these gems all kind of the sort of moonstone color. And see, there are spikes on here, or at least they're supposed to be spikes. I kind of want to make them the same color as the, um, the magic, you know? Just like, just kind of works. Making it kind of crystally. This isn't going to be like some sort of buzzsaw. This is going to be like made from like sort of magic related crystals. I made this one 
some of these I kind of customized to be kind of based on like sort of corrupted magic. Which we could totally do like different colored crystals to kind of emulate different types of magic. The metal on here isn't made of metal, it's made of crystal. That is what I'm going to go for. The metal on this is actually crystal. And let's see, there's gonna be some that'll be like kind of a little bit more... This would kind of like work well for like the earth-based magic, I suppose. It's gonna look a little funky. It's definitely going to look funky. It is not going to look normal. Let's see, we can use that. Then the lava lith. Kind of melting everything together. Let's see, we've got earth magic, we've got water, we've got fire. What would be a good air color? Solar stone? I don't know. This is looking very like hodgepodge in a way. But it sort of works. Yeah, that, that kind of works for air, I think. For what I'm trying to go for with this, it works. Then the main staff is gonna be like some sort of wood. And then... You have it all tied together with some leather. It's very funky looking, but it works. And then of course the like the magical ice that's coming off of it. I don't know if you even look like Rhymeberry at this point, but you just look you just look totally badass, but you know what? That that's totally fine by me. This is just kind of an idea of a sort of what-if scenario. Wait, there's one little spot I missed. Let's go ahead and add another bit of the lava light onto here, because it works for like these tiny little spots. So there we go. Now Rhymeberry completely has their funky little buzzsaw magic axe, and it's awesome. Those of you who actually play this class can probably tell I've never played an Artificer before. But you know what? It works. It totally works. Look at you. You look awesome. I love you. I need to move your tail out of the way. I think... That this is Rhymeberry all set up too. They look really, really cool. I. <laughs> then it's very much. That axe is very much a hodgepodge. One moment I love it, the next I kind of hate it. But you know what? It real. It. For what it is, it works. For the world, it kind of works. It's just made out of a bunch of crystals that that magic is powered by, and Rhymeberry uses it to like help, like, emphasize attacks a little bit more, it works. I kind of love it. But anyways, I think that that is going to be all of the cats for this episode. So guys, if you enjoyed, please be sure to go ahead and hit the like button, leave a comment down below, letting me know what you think of any of these guys. And if you're not already, please be sure to subscribe, and I will see you guys in the future. So stay safe out there, everybody.